Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at this thing. This is a Zalman CNPS 9900 Max that I got off of eBay for, for like 15 quid or something. Um, it was really cheap. Um, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you what, what, why I went and got, uh, got this old air cooler of all things. Now, um, because I'm sure everybody's going to be, well, a few people are going to be interested in the actual thermal performance. I do have it running Cinebench right now. Um, and it is running pretty hot, as you can see from the, the red numbers in, in hardware info, right? Like, that's nine over a little over 90 degrees. Um, well, there's one core hitting 95, but, um, now, so it's running quite hot, but the thing is, the, the room temperature right now is, I'm just going to point this at the desk. Yeah, room's at, like, 23 degrees Celsius, so that's, it's not too bad. Um, especially considering that I'm not running this at like, like it is just five gigahertz, but I'm not running this at like minimized voltages or anything. So the, the CPU core voltage right now and the power draw is actually quite high. Um, yeah, we're looking at like 260, 200, actually, let's reset that and, and just watch the average power draw. And as you can see, it's like 260 plus Watts. Um, and that's at like 1.28 volts. So... Yeah, it's really not doing a bad job considering how hot the CPU, like how much power the CPU is pulling. It's really not doing a bad job in my opinion. Like when I was, when, when I bought this, I wasn't expecting to get 220, uh, like I was expecting to get like 200 watts of cooling capacity out of it. I wasn't expecting to get 260. So that's, that's nice. That's, that's a lot more cooling capacity than I, I, I thought I was paying for. Um, um, so that's a nice surprise. Now, the fan that I have in there is not stock. Um, the stock fan that this comes with is some, like, 135 millimeter open, no, frameless thing. Um, I don't believe in frameless fans. I mean, why, like, the whole point of a, like, because if you have a frameless fan, it's going to just chuck air all over the air, like, ev out the sides, everywhere. And it's just like, well, but we're trying to cool the fin stack. Right, like the the whole point of the fan is to cool the fin stack, not the GPU, not the VRM, the fin stack. So, yeah, I've swapped the fan with a 120 millimeter Cooler Master. I believe it's an Air Balance fan. I don't know what it's called. It goes up to two and a half thousand RPM, so it moves quite a lot of air and uh, is a bit loud in my opinion, but um, totally acceptable for a test bench heatsink like this. So anyway, that's kind of the kind of the cooling performance. Um, and it, as I said, like, this is not the reason I got it. Like, the, 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 like, I'm surprised that it can deal with 260 watts. Uh, yes, it's a two and a half thousand RPM fan, but the, I'm still surprised that it can deal with 260 watts. Um, I would, the, the, the reason I got this is not the cooling capacity. No, no, no. The reason I got this, um, other than the fact that it is a pretty funky looking heatsink and, well, I, I do have a thing for funky looking hardware. Um, is that it is super convenient for test bench applications. So the fan that I have in there is just sitting there. So we can just pull that out. Ta-da. And the heatsink is also just sitting there. As you can probably tell from the fact that like it wobbles around. But notice I cannot rotate it like completely on the socket. And the reason for that is, is because while it doesn't really have any mounting hardware, it does have a few screws. And those screws make certain that it doesn't slide off the CPU, even if it's being only held in place by gravity. Um, which admittedly isn't really that much, considering this heatsink is, I think, about 750 grams or something. I, I don't know if that's with a fan or without a fan. With the fan that I've shoved in there, it's probably a bit heavier than that. Um, I would have really preferred if this came in, like, a 1 kilogram variant <laughs> or a 1.2 kilogram variant. You know, just to get some extra mounting pressure on the, on the CPU. But the thing is, it's super ridiculously easy to, well, uninstall and install on, on a test bench. And unlike what I've done in the past with sometimes, though, I, I can't do it without looking at it. So I'll have to, I'll put it on and then, then we'll keep talking about it. There we go. Yeah, so it's on now. Um, and yeah, so 
It's very easy to take off, it's very easy to put on, and that's literally the only reason I got it. Also, I, I put it on backwards. Well, whatever, we'll, we'll just leave it alone for a bit. Uh, it's not like I'm going to be turning the system on again. So, yeah, that's the great thing, is, like, I can literally put it on like this, let gravity, you know, make sure that it sits, like, <laughs> take care of the mounting pressure on the CPU, which is not great. It could probably cool a little bit more if I actually had mounting hardware, but again, the thing that I wanted from this heatsink was the convenient, like, the, the super convenient mounting hardware. The thing is, most air cool, like, with AIOs, like, you can't do this because the, the, the tubing puts so much strain on the block, it'll always just pull it up. So, with an AIO, there's not really any practical way of achieving something like this. Also, AIOs take up desk space, right? They need to go somewhere, the radiator's big, so that's annoying. Um, most other air coolers do not have that uh, cross, don't have the cross mounting on the, on the top, top part of the cooler. Most air coolers use a backplate system and then they have like a, a sort of H pattern um, set up where you have two bars going across the socket, well, across the, the mounting holes like this, and then there's a bar that goes down the center of the heatsink across the heatsink, um, and that actually attaches the heatsink to the motherboard. The problem with the sort of H bracket style heat sinks is that, well, you do need the back plate, <laughs> or you mostly need the back plate because you, you don't get this option of just sort of uh, attaching like M3, uh, like th those are relatively long M3 screws that just go through the motherboard. And their job is to just make sure that the heat sink can't slide off the, off the CPU because the, the problem normally with gravity mounting heat sinks like this um, and, and that's just like, that's not like, that's a common term that overclockers use when, because when, I'm not the first person to come up with the idea of just sitting a heatsink on top of a CPU and hoping that it doesn't slide off. No, that's actually a very popular thing. I've seen people have like, you know, put like a Noctua NHD 15 or an NHD 14 on a CPU and then like stack books on top of it to, to get extra mounting pressure because sometimes... You're binning CPUs, or you're you're testing different motherboards, and and you you want to be able to swap CPUs or motherboards very very quickly, and mounting hardware like full blown you know complicated mounting hardware gets in the way of doing that because most of the, like the biggest problem is like you need to take the backplate on and off the motherboards right, which gets really annoying, and the same goes for AIOs is just like you do need mounting hardware with an AIO with this I just need gravity. Um, and, and so that's why I picked up one of these uh, on, on eBay because, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if there's any other heatsinks with a similar, like, mounting style. I, I think there's a Be Quiet heatsink that might actually be able to pull this off as well. Um, or maybe a couple of Be Quiet heatsinks that might be able to pull this off. But basically, like, I know, like, because I have a big Fantex uh, heatsink. I've worked with Noctua heatsinks. I don't really have any. Well, no, I've worked with an NHD14, but, like, I don't have one. Um, and the, the knock to I have is for Threadripper, so, you know, can't, can't, can't use that on Intel. Um, or not on, like, not the way I want to anyway, but yeah, like, NHD 14 mounting hardware would, doesn't, doesn't really do this. Uh, the PHTC 14 PE, uh, from Fantex that I have is just, like, I believe that's mostly a copy of the knock to a mounting hardware, so that also doesn't, like, you, you can't do that with this. Uh, I mean, you can't do this with that. Um. So, yeah, and so most air coolers, like, they, they just don't have the, the, the style of mounting hardware to, to pull this off, and this one does, which is why I have one now. Um, so, yeah, um, there. I have a Zalman CNPS uh, 9900 Max because I'm too lazy to, <laughs> to undo a few bolts every time I want to swap CPUs. Um, Actually, the bigger problem is the whole swap a motherboard. Like, the, the whole pulling the back, like, taking the backplate off and then putting it onto another motherboard is just so annoying. The number of times where I'm like, oh, I'm just going to quickly test something, and then I realize, wait a minute, where is the mounting hardware for the AIO? And it's like, oh, I, I left it on one of the other motherboards. And I think there, like, there's been a couple occasions where I'd have to, like, dig through my stack of motherboards to find the motherboard that ha still has the mounting hardware, like, installed on it. And it's just like, never have to deal with that again with this. Um, admittedly, this won't do like high CPU workloads. Like if, if I was running an AIO, we could easily shove over 300 watts into that 11900K and it would be just fine. Um, well, just fine. We could do that though. <laughs> with this, we can't. Like we really can't. Um, 
so yeah, it's, it's not a replacement in terms of cooling capacity, but the main reason I got this is, like, for me personally, it's, like, memory testing, uh, you know, and that's the main thing, is, like, memory testing, because memory testing a lot of the time requires that, you know, like, I, like, I, I find, do something on one motherboard, and then I go, like, oh, I wonder if this works on another motherboard, and that is, like, ah, oh. and, and a lot of the time I won't, won't end up doing, the, like, that test, because it's just, like, but I don't feel like undoing the AIO mounting hardware, so... Uh, yeah, um, there, Zalman CNPS 9900 Max, uh, maximizing my pr productivity, um, as of, like, a few, few weeks, well, a few days ago, I think. I've not had it that long, but I absolutely love it. Like, it's, it's awesome, like, being able to literally just throw a heatsink on the motherboard and not worry about it sliding off. Because for AMD motherboards, right, that's not a problem, you just use the AMD stock cooler, uh, you clip it on, and... Ta-da! Solved. Uh, but with Intel motherboards, it's like, well, the Intel stock cooler is garbage, <laughs> so, so we're not using that. Also, it uses pushpins, which are really inconvenient. Like, pushpins suck, okay? Like, the worst thing ever is pushpins. So, even if I had an Intel stock cooler, it still wouldn't be as fast as, like, the AMD stock cooler or this to, to, to remount or whatever. Um, and so, yeah. Um, and then, like, the AIOs and the other air coolers is just, like, well, then most of those don't have the, the mounting pr pattern, like, don't have this style of mounting hardware, which I'm not sure how to call it, right? Like, to me, it's, like, because this still comes with a backplate, it's just that it also has, like, the full, like, the, the mounting hardware attaches directly to the heatsink instead of attaching, like, instead of having, like, a whole three or four piece mounting hardware set up. It's just like, yeah, like, mo mo like the important stuff is attached to the heatsink, so, um, where was I going with this? So, yeah, that's kind of that. <laughs> Video's kind of going nowhere at this point, so I guess we'll, we'll end it here. Um, and yeah, if, if you were, well, I guess if you were considering a heatsink for, for similar applications, like, let's say you're binning Intel CPUs or something, and actually, if, if you are considering it, um, it's worth noting this will actually go on X79 and X58 and X99 and X299, because I do have M2, I mean M3, uh, the, the screws on it are M3 thread, so they'll actually thread right through a X9, well, you can get some X299 and X99 boards that don't go all the way through, like the, the mounting, like, because the, the mounting plate actually like, there's some boards without screw holes in them for X99 and X299. So this won't really work that well on the... Well, no, I think you could still make... Well... Eh, okay, no, I, I don't think that would work that well on those. Um, but if you do have X99 or X299 boards where you do have, like, the, the holes go all the way through the board, um, you can still just throw this on because those are threaded in M4. Um, whereas I'm using M3 hardware and M3 is so much smaller than M4 that it'll just go straight through. Um, like it'll snag a bit, but it like, you don't have to like screw it in or anything. It's, it's not like, it's not like trying to get, uh, what is it? I think, I think it's six thirty seconds or something. Um, some weird, like it, it, whatever thread size it is that AMD stock coolers use, um, like the stock backplates from AMD use, yeah, that thread, whatever the hell it is, it's not metric, so I have no idea what it is. That, like, that does not go through an M4 very easily. Like, it's not big, like, it doesn't go through M4 very easily at all, so it's not an issue if you just use M3, uh, mounting hardware, so, I mean, M3, M3 screws like I did. Um, so anyway, there, that's it for the video, thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking. I have a Patreon, there's also the AHOC Teespring store, um, and yeah, uh, there's links to both down in the description. If you would check them out, that would be much appreciated. And that's it for the video, so thanks for watching, and goodbye.